With the first update patch that Enshrouded have done to their game, movement has been changed significantly in that stamina is now more important than ever and I want to show you guys one of my favourite so-called movement builds in today's video. What I'm going to go through is some of my favourite skill points and some nifty tips and tricks of items and weapons and armour that you can use in order to make the most out of your stamina and movement in this game. If you do find this video helpful, make sure to drop me a like and a subscribe down below and let's jump straight into it. So first things first, there is a few really crucial things to note. Firstly, if we press H and have a look on the top right of my screen here, you can see the split between stats that I currently have and you can see that endurance is one of the stats up there. This one, if we hover over it on the skill tree, says that it increases your endurance attribute by one every time you take a point into that perk on the skill tree. And it says that that increases stamina by 10 per attribute point. So 10 times 10 obviously is 100, and you can actually get more than this depending on what armor you wear. Now, I think the first and most important thing to cover here then is the rested bonus. As you can see, you can get the rested bonus in the top left of your screen. If you do want an in-depth guide on how to maximize this, there is a guide on my channel called How to Maximize Your Stamina. Feel free to give that a watch. But basically, that's going to be the first way to increase the amount of maximum stamina that you have in the game, which is going to be really important because every time you run, you are going to deplete that stamina. Now, looking at the skill tree then, there's a few different things that you want here. And like I covered briefly at the beginning, endurance is one of the main things that I've gone and focused around here. But let's start off in this direction on the right hand side from the middle circle. We've gone here and we've taken a point into dexterity. Now, the reason for that is because we wanted airborne, which means that gliders consume 30% less stamina. And then, of course, updraft after this, which says pressing the jump button while gliding gives you a small height boost. And this skill can be used once per flight. Now, that has a little caveat to it, which we're going to touch on in a moment with a certain ring that you can use, which means that you can essentially updraft as many times as you want to, which is actually really, really cool and means you can glide for ages if you have enough stamina. Now, moving back onto the tree, we've taken the endurance point above that just to give us more endurance. And then we've taken silent stride, which means increases your movement speed while sneaking. You don't have to take this if you're not somebody that likes to sneak in the game, but I am just showing you all of the movement based stuff that I have found. Now, also we've taken over here, lumberjack, We've taken Miner, we've taken Mason, and we've taken Quality Gear. Quality Gear is not really relevant, but the other three all mean that you're going to take up less stamina when you are collecting resources. So that being said, that kind of additionally adds to the movement because it means you're going to be able to move about better. And it also means if you do get into combat, you're going to have some stamina left to be able to block and to be able to fight. So this is really important for, I thought I'd throw those ones in. It also means that I can go up to this endurance node here. So that's another bonus for us. We've then obviously started on this side on the survivor route, which is probably the best route for this type of build. We've gone for endurance and then we've gone for runner, which is sprinting speed increased by 10% and stamina consumption decreased by 10% pretty good we've then gone for double jump i absolutely love this perk in the game i think it's fantastic it says allow jumping for a second time while airborne this is absolutely brilliant really great for movement in all types of the puzzles and different areas of the map then another endurance point after that and above that we've gone for wanderlust this one is stamina consumption for sprinting on dirt roads is reduced from 90 to 80 percent and stamina consumption for sprinting on stone roads is reduced from 75 to 50 percent now this is important because you can actually build dirt roads around your base i haven't found a way to build stone roads yet but do let me know in the comments if you have found a way but you can make some dirt roads around your base to make your stamina last even longer if you haven't put things like grappling hook loops and that sort of stuff around we've then gone for good metabolism here this one is where health mana and stamina orbs restore 30 percent instead of 10 percent of the respective resource and mana and health potions restore 20 percent more this is generally pretty helpful but it's to get to the next perks that we wanted which is of course sweet tooth now this is the stamina regeneration of sweets is increased by 50%. I'm going to touch on food in just a moment's time, but this is going to be super, super useful. We've gone for rebound here, which is next to the good metabolism perk. And again, this one increases the base stamina regeneration by 50%. So it's absolutely fantastic. We then go to the top middle for a dexterity point in order to go backwards and get the arachnoid perk, which is stamina consumption while climbing is reduced by 50%. And then we've gone up to the top here to get dessert stomach, which is where you gain one additional food slot. And again, I'm going to touch on food in a little bit more depth in a second. But having an extra slot means you can have something that focuses on your attack, something that focuses on your health. And then we can also have stamina regen as well as endurance gain. So this is really, really useful. And of course, an endurance point on the end. 
Then we steamed off to the right hand side of this tree a little bit here and we went for Relentless Flame. This one is maximum time in the shroud is increased. Not necessarily good for the movement build, although it is handy to have. But we wanted to get across to these ones. Now Calm Spirit again, not necessarily directly related to movement, but it is very, very helpful for when you're going around because wild animals within 50 meters will be pacified and less attacked. So it's going to give you less obstruction on your movement. But the reason we want to get there is to get this other Endurance of the Flame perk. So we also went through the Beastmaster one, which means when you are targeted by an attack, wild animals within 50 meters will attack the enemy. This again, particularly in the higher level zones, is actually pretty useful and is going to mean that you're going to be less hindered when you're going around. And if you do get hindered, you're going to get back up from some of the wildlife. So that's always a good thing. But yeah, we wanted to get to this Endurance of the Flame. This is where you gain one Endurance for every two Flame levels, or levels of the Flame, I should say. Which is really useful because it means every time you level up your flame altar you're going to be getting some additional endurance there which is very nice now as you'll be able to see i am max level in the game and i've obviously cleared most of the content but you can see i still have 25 spare skill tokens this is intentional i've left this kind of free to choose if you wanted to go for a full movement build you can still then add in some damage whether it be down the warrior tree or the wizard tree or the assassin tree whatever you want to go for um, but that is going to be leaving you some points additionally to this which you can use now there is things you could pick up like the sneak attack because we got the movement speed for sneaking which you know some people may like to have and therefore you could go for backstab damage as well or you could go for the merciless attack but those are what I would say are the essential ones any extra points feel free to use in whatever you would like now, depending on your playstyle, there is a few options that we have here for armor. Firstly, we've got the Deer Stalker. Well, it says gloves, but I'm actually on the legs here. And these give you plus 18 stamina and plus one sprint speed. So if you are wanting a little bit of extra speed, these could be a great option. You've then also got the Deer Stalker boots. Now, these ones give you minus 350 stamina regen delay and plus four stamina regen. But I am going to talk about the recommended boots I have in just a moment. Moving on to the Assassin set, we can see that the Assassin trousers give you plus 30% sneak speed. So if you do go for that sneaky kind of backstab type approach build this could be really useful for you the boots here just give you mana and stamina regen so if you're going for like a wizard hybrid build this could be really good again giving you the stamina regen to allow you to run around a lot faster and then we also have the dead eye set here the trousers here giving you stamina and stamina regen and the boots giving you minus 700 stamina regeneration delay and plus three stamina regen so obviously much better now the boots i've got here are the hawk boots so these ones give you minus 700 stamina regeneration delay and plus two stamina regeneration now obviously if we look back on the hunter at those dead eye ones those are a little bit better because they give you plus three but these have to be crafted with padding and yellow fabric and scales etc which some of you may not have got access to yet or you might not have the materials for whereas the Whereas the Hawk books can actually be looted from chests around the map in the higher level zones. So these should be fairly easy to get your hands on and definitely do help a lot. Trousers, you could go for something like the Elder Trousers. Personally, I've gone for these because they give mana and mana regen. And particularly when we're going to be talking about updraft in a minute before you've got the ring that I'm going to recommend, these could be useful. But if I'm honest, I would probably most likely go back into the Hunter and again go for the Deer Stalker legs to get that extra stamina and some sprint speed. So they'd be the best ones I would recommend and then in terms of chest plate you do have the hawk chest here which gives you plus five seconds on rested and minus 31 percent stamina depletion while gliding so if you are going to be someone that wants to glide for a long time this could be really really useful or you could go back onto the dead eye set and just get yourself plus 48 stamina and five rested again it does require the materials to get whereas the hawk chest again can be looted from the chests around the map in the higher tier zones but Whichever you can get your hands on, it's kind of up to you how you want to make that work with your gameplay, but either of those are good. Now, one really important thing here is the Ring of Rapacity. Now, this one gives you minus 20 mana, but it does give you plus 20 mana regeneration. This is really good because you can actually stack this twice. So this means when you're gliding, if you're going to use updraft, you can continuously use this. Now, this is, of course, my recommended and best option. And I'm going to show you how this works in just a moment. But just to cover another ring while we're here, if you do want more stamina and stamina regen, you can as well get the ring of stamina. Now, this one will just mean that you can run for longer. And when you do run out of stamina or get lower on stamina and need to regen, it's going to go back up a lot faster. But if I just show you here, I'll just quickly run around my base a little bit just to give you a quick little idea of this. If you watch my stamina bar just to the left of my character, if we stop running, 
and about a second later it's fully regen to the top there so it's very very quick stamina regen with this build and that is with the two rings of rapidity on and i'm going to show you how these work right now so we've just gone to the nearest shrine to my house which is the springlands fast travel and we're simply just going to double jump off here and glide and if you have a little look at my stamina bar it's really not going down very fast at all we're able to glide around here and then if we press the jump button the space button there we can get updraft which means that we can get some height on that now we obviously if you keep an eye on my mana in the top left hand corner if we just do this again you can see it uses up all of that really fast but then it regens super super quickly so these rings are very very good now another tip that goes hand in hand with this is pressing the cancel button and then spamming space to reglide and using updraft again this can drop you a bit of height, but then you get some of it back with the updraft. So if you are near to a location like this and you feel like you might not quite reach it, you can drop a little bit, get some distance down and then get the height back. I think it gives you just a little bit more than what you lost. So it's not going to give you masses more height, but it will give you some advantage over regularly just using it once. Now, I do just want to show you with the rings here as well what we can do. So if we actually, let's use a Shroud Meteor here. This one's going to take up quite a bit of mana. And just watch the mana regen in the top left, how fast this is. That is insane. With both these rings, it's very, very quick. And also, just to show you guys what my mana actually is, if we have a look at all details here, you can see that I only actually have 140 mana. So this isn't by no means a mana-orientated or wizard-style build. So if you actually have some more, this is going to be super, super useful. Now, I did find out how to get this ring from watching another creator's video. There's been a few people posting videos about it. But the one I watched was from Mordorim. So big shout out to him. I'll leave that video linked in the description. Essentially, what you want to do is head over to the spire up at the top here in Revelwood's Fast Travel and go down to just next to where this flame shrine is, Willow Crush. So once you get to the Fast Travel Shrine, you want to head southwest if you are going to glide in. Pretty much glide just towards the left-hand side of this enshrouded rift in the middle. And what you will see just to your right, if the sun wasn't directly in our eyes, is that sort of misty bridge. And we want to be landing just to the side of this here. And essentially, we're going to go straight up this. If you have got the Ghost Glider, you can land where I just did pretty comfortably. If you haven't, you might have to land further over that side and come across this bridge here. But you will see where we are on the map now is basically just underneath where Willow Crush is, right here. And what we want to do is head over to this location where you can see you can mine the floor. And you want to just mine down a couple of times, two or three sort of hits there. And you will see that there is a search thing here. So we can go ahead and loot this and you always guaranteed get this ring from this location. You can then go ahead and quit to main menu if you want in order to get this ring if you want to reset and go again. So you can get two of them and double equip it like I have. All right, so finally here we want to talk about food and what food that you want to be using. So obviously you would probably want a constitution food, whatever this may be, the current stage of the game you're at. Then you will either want a strength for dexterity or an intelligence food, again, depending what sort of build you're using. But because we have the dessert stomach perk, this means we can also have an endurance food. So this should probably be chamomile tea, which gives you plus five health, regeneration and two endurance if you're sort of early to mid game. And once you get to late game and you've unlocked saffron, this spice tea gives you plus five endurance. This is going to be hugely, hugely beneficial and you definitely want to be using this one of your slots. And the other thing I would recommend is a energy one. Now remember that sweet stuff... So anything that says sweet here and has the candy cane emblem, which is the sugar, the grilled yucca fruit and the popcorn, we get 50% extra with these because of the perks we've taken. So again, for the fourth slot, I would recommend using one of these. Now, it is worth noting that yucca fruits are the best, the grilled ones, because they do last the longest, so that's seven minutes. Sugar is five, and then the popcorn is less stamina recharge and only five minutes. So do the grilled yucca fruits where you can. You get these from the cactuses if you harvest them. And obviously, that's going to give you the most stamina recharge and the most endurance points that you can possibly want to have now it's also worth noting that if you are towards the end of the game and you've got quite far in the progression line for the npcs once you get the beehive smoker for the farmer they will allow you to place down a beehive of your own here which if you pop in sugar and water it will give you honey now honey is really useful because it is a plus 15 stamina recharge and early on in the game you can get this by just hitting any of the beehives that you find in the trees you can get part way of this build going pretty much as soon as you start the game if you do want to head towards a movement style sort of build so hopefully this video has helped you out and at least giving you some ideas of things and perks you could take for movement some of the best foods you can use and some tips and tricks including the ring and 
and the armors on what you can use to maximize your stamina, to increase your movement ability, and of course increase your gliding, because who doesn't enjoy the gliding, especially with the updraft and that really, really helpful mana ring. If you have enjoyed the video, do drop me a like down below, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all of the latest videos. We've got tons more of Shrouded content coming to the channel very shortly, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, I'll catch you guys again very shortly on my next video. Take care, and peace. Thank you.